A bird that needs no introduction, the American crow is very familiar and found over a great deal of North America. At home in our cities, parks, neighborhoods, and backyards, these canny corvids are highly intelligent and can remember people who have done them wrong years later. That goes for good people, too. Let's get more familiar with this wonderful bird. Enjoy! A large songbird that is black all over, including the legs, feet, and bill. In certain lighting conditions, though, their glossy feathers reveal iridescent colors. During late summer, they can appear to be brownish, due to the molt. This common character has long legs, a thick neck, and a heavy straight bill. They are also very cute, I might add. One bird they are commonly mistaken for is their much larger cousin, the raven. These majestic birds have some similarities. However, their size differs, as does their bill. Measuring roughly 15 to 21 inches, males are slightly larger than the female, which can be seen when a pair is perched close together. On average, these birds weigh 11 to 22 ounces and have a wingspan of 33 to 40 inches, which when in flight is rounded with spread wingtips. One thing I love about crows is their waddle walk, kind of like a duck due to their short roundish or squarish tail. The clever American crow is found throughout most of the lower 48 states, outside the southwestern deserts, and from east to west in Canada. For many areas, they are permanent residents. However, in northern regions, flocks leave, spending the winter in locations a short distance south of their breeding range. One of the most adaptable birds, crows have benefited from living around people, taking advantage of places such as agricultural fields, roadsides, and garbage dumps. Areas like fields, open woodlands, and forests are places they prefer. They are also often seen in city parks, golf courses, cemeteries, backyards, marshes, and beaches. It is very uncommon to find them in large unbroken areas of forests and deserts, though. There isn't much these large corvids won't eat. Seeds, nuts, berries, fruit, grains, many kinds of small animals like mice, toads, earthworms, and even garbage and carrion. Other food items include aquatic animals like fish, mussels, clams, or young turtles. And different kinds of insects, as well as crop pests, which is a good thing for farmers. American crows will also eat eggs and nestlings of many different species of other birds. Their vocal array is rather large, but they aren't usually considered as having great voices. The most common call many are familiar with is that loud series of ka ka ka. but they do make some interesting mixture of sounds that could be classified as a song. There are more than 20 calls recognized. The harsh ka comes in different lengths and qualities, serving a different purpose. The young make a high-pitched nasal call when bagging. It's described as sounding similar to a fish crow. Listening to these birds can be fun. They make so many odd noises. The male and female build the nest. Even their young from previous years may help. Usually it's hidden in a crotch close to the trunk of a tree. Evergreens are preferred, but that doesn't mean they won't nest in deciduous ones, especially where pines aren't available. Anywhere from three to nine eggs may be laid, and they could have one to two broods depending. After nearly three weeks of incubating, the eggs hatch. Almost another month or more, the nestlings fledge. At this stage, they have blue eyes and the corners of the bill are pinkish. Cute. Young birds grow into fully mature adults who can breed by age two. Often they remain with their parents, though, which can be several years. 
One young crow that I know has been with its parents since 2013. During this time, they learn all that they can and help to raise their parents next year's young. This is known as cooperative breeding. One family unit of crows can be very large, with as many as 15 individuals, which could include young from five different years. American crows are full of interesting behaviors. For one, they are highly social birds that are quite intelligent. They have a remarkable memory, allowing them to remember details about their territories and map out great distances. It's known that some crows memorize the route of garbage trucks, following them in the hopes of easy pickings. They also have tight-knit families. Rarely is there ever just a single crow. Usually at least one other or more is nearby. Many years ago, a study from the University of Washington by wildlife biologist John Marsloff revealed that crows remember the faces of people as well as their actions years later, especially if a person mistreated one. They even communicate this information to other crows. The incredible thing is that this seems to be passed down to other generations of crows long after the initial ones passed on. This is also true for nice humans. Crows don't forget a good face. They must talk to each other. Over fall and winter, crows from all around the city come together in the evening to roost. As many as hundreds and thousands can be seen as they get ready to rest for the night. An interesting behavior that can lead you to other animals and birds is their nature of mobbing. Should a gray horned owl, goshawk, or any other awesome creature be detected by one crow, it isn't long before everyone is aware. It pays to listen to these birds because you never know what may be around. There's a fascinating behavior of theirs too, called a crow funeral, where many individuals surround one of their fallen for some time. Some kind may take place as well as silence. A sweet behavior of theirs is how they can be affectionate, not only to their partner, but young too, by preening their face and head feathers. American crows are numerous although their numbers declined slightly between 1966 and 2019, according to the North American Breeding Bird Survey. Partners in Flight estimates the global breeding population at 28 million. They rate a 6 out of 20 on the Continental Concern Score. One major problem for them is the West Nile, to which they are greatly susceptible. This virus was introduced to North America in 1999. Most crows do not survive this illness and die within a week. A rare few make it. Other birds don't seem to die at the same rate from the disease. In some areas, the loss of crows is significant. These birds are one of my top favorite. I love seeing them wherever I go. They never bore me. It's just so much fun to watch the inner workings of their smart mind. I've been lucky enough to know many over the years. The longest I've known one is my sweet Hoppy, which is loved by many of my neighbors, too. She's been around since 2012. I want to share a story, though, of a different crow family in our local city park. A couple of years ago, my brother and I went to the park and just sat in the car chatting. I noticed a couple of crows around and had some food, so I shared it with them. A whole year later, we went to the same park and the same spot. While sitting in the car talking and other cars scattered around the parking lot, a crow came straight to our car and just waited. It did not go to any of the other ones. Luckily, I had food. It seemed as though that crow did not forget us after a full year, even though we hadn't been there not once since the initial time. I knew they were smart and remembered, but that experience for me was quite telling of just how sharp their memory is. I bet they even knew the make and year of my brother's car, perhaps even the license plate number. One more interesting tidbit of information, since it's Halloween. Although across time and around the globe, crows are often seen as harbingers of death, some Native American tribes do not view crows in that way. Instead, they see them as symbols of wisdom or transformation. 
Crows are fascinating, but more so, I'd like to think of them as fun neighbors, another being sharing our cities with us. To some that may be annoying, but to others it's wonderful having them living amongst us. What are your thoughts on these big brain beauties? What stories do you have to share of your own experience with one? And did I forget anything interesting? Comment below and let me know. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks a bunch for watching. Take care, happy birding, and happy Halloween! What do you want? Peanut?